Hi again. In the last two videos, uh, we talked about the binomial coefficients, uh, which count the number of um, n-bit strings with k1s or the number of k element subsets of a set of size n. And these videos were a little long, so in this new in this video now, we'll talk about properties of binomial coefficients, and we'll keep it uh, very short. Okay. So first, we want to say, to show, as we had mentioned, that n choose k equals n choose n minus k. Now, uh, for example, if we take 5 choose 3, that's 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial. Uh, and that's the same as 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial, 3 factorial, which is 5 choose 2. Okay? So uh, we can see that this is true for fi 5 choose 3 and 5 choose 2. We want to show it in general. We'll give two proofs. Both of them are going to be simple. The first one is algebraic, and that it just repeats what we wrote here. n choose k is n factorial divided by k factorial n minus k factorial. Can we re reorganize the elements here as n minus k factorial and k factorial? And that's going to give us n choose n minus k. So that's one. And um, if you want uh, another proof, which is combinatorial, then what we're going to do is we're going to count the same collection of elements in two different ways. So um, we're going to show that, in other words, that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between the set of all um, st strings of length n with uh, k1s and strings of length n with n minus k1s. And the way to do it is by just complementing uh, the bits in the sequence to create a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two collections. F uh, for example, if uh, we want to consider this collection of all four-bit strings with three ones, we want to show that it's in one-to-one -one correspondence with all four-bit strings with a single one, four minus three, one. And here is the mapping. So if we take uh, a sequence, a binary sequence of length four with three ones, we could just complement the bits. So instead of one, 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 zero, we have zero, 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 one. This mapping is one-to-one. -one. It maps every element here to a unique element here. And therefore, these two sets have the same cardinality. But what we have here is um, the collection of all uh, four-bit strings with three ones. And we mapped it to the collection of all four-bit uh, sequences with a single one. So therefore, these two have the same size. And therefore, we have that four choose three, the size of the set four choose three is the same as four choose one. And in general, n choose k is the number of n-bit sequences with k1s is going to be equal to the number of n-bit sequences with n minus k1s, and that's n choose n minus k. Okay, another um, uh, identity that we would like to show is uh, that n choose k is n over k times n minus 1 choose k minus 1. So this is a recursive way of defining the binomial coefficients. You can define the binomial coefficients n choose k by first defining n minus 1 choose k minus 1, and then multiply by n over k, which can be useful when calculating uh, large binomial coefficients if you need to calculate all of them, and you don't want to calculate n factorial, k factorial, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, the way we'll do it is, uh, so first let, let's do an example. So uh, 5 choose 3 is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial, which is 10. And that's going to be equal to 5 over 3 times 6. That's again 10, which is 5 over 3 times 4 choose 2, which is 6. So we can see an example of this um, equality. Okay. And the way we'll do it is by taking advantage of our interpretation of n choose k as um, the number or as the number of um, binary strings. So we can see that we can generalize it to, from binary string to uh, strings over uh, alphabet of size three and get a simple proof of this uh, of this um, equality. Okay. So um, one nice way to to prove things like this is if you want to show that combinatorially, then it's awfully often convenient not to have numbers in the denominator, not to divide things, but multiply things. So we just count sets um, using the product rule, and we don't need to divide. So in other words, what we want to show is we want to show that n choose k times k, this one here, is n times n minus 1 choose k minus 1. Okay? And the way we'll do it is by counting the number of length and ternary strings, strings over 0, 1, and 2, with k minus 1 once and 1, 2. And we'll show that um, this number is equal to both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So one way to count um, the number of length n ternary strings with k11s and 12 
is to first specify, so, so and here is, uh, just to give us an example, this is for n equal to 4 and k equal to 3, we're counting sequences like 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. All these sequences have length 4. They have k minus 1, namely they have two ones and a single 2. Length 4, two ones and a single 2. Length 4, two ones and a single 2. We want to count how many such sequences there are. Okay. So one way to do it, which is written on the left-hand side, is to first choose the location. So notice that if you have k minus 1 once and a single 2, then you have a total of k non-zero elements. So what we can do is you could first choose the k locations of these non-zeros, the, the k minus 1 once and a single 2, the k of them. We need to choose the locations of the non-zeros. You can do it in n choose k different ways. And then once we chose the location of the k non-zeros, we need to specify the location of the single 2. Okay, there's a single 2, and that out of case location that we cho chose, the k ways of doing it. Again, by the product rule, uh, the number of such sequences is n choose k, deciding first on the location of the non-zeros, and then deciding on the location of the of the two, it's this product. Okay, so this is one way to count how many length and ternary strings are there with k minus one one and so on, and a single two. Okay, another way to um, to count this number is to um, and this was the choosing the location of the two that was the k. Another way of calculating this number is to first choose the location of the two, and there are n ways of doing that. And once we chose the location of the 2, for example, here we said that the 2 is in the last location, we need to specify the sequence, and we have n minus 1 location left, and we have k minus 1 once, so we have n minus 1, choose k minus 1. So that's how many ways we have from the remaining n minus 1 location, choose the location of the k minus 1 once, or the single 2. Okay, so that's this. So we count this number in two different ways, and we got these two values, therefore uh, these two values must be the same. Okay, um, here is another identity that is very useful. Uh, what is summation from i going from 0 up to n of n choose i? And we're going to show it's 2 to the n. And again, you could, so here is an example. 3 choose 0 plus 3 choose 1 plus 3 choose 2 plus 3 choose 3 is what? 3 choose 0 is 1. 3 choose 1 is 3. 3 choose 2 is 3. 3 choose 3 is 1. So we have 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, which gives us 8, which is 2 cubed. Okay. And this is true in general, summation of n choose i is 2 to the n, and the question is why? Why? And again, you could give an algebraic proof and a combinatorial proof. Uh, we'll give here the combinatorial proof. Uh, so notice that the sequence of all n-bit strings with, um, can be written as um, the union of all n choose i of all uh, sequences of length n binary string with i once. Okay. And Therefore, we get that the size of this set, the number of n-bit strings, is 2 to the n. And this, this union is disjoint because sequences with, with single ones are disjoint from sequences with two ones and so on. So, this, so 2 to the n, the size, the number of uh, n-bit strings that there are, is going to be by the summation rule. Summation from i going from 0 up to n of the number of n-bit strings with i ones. And that number is n choose i. So it's going to be summation, i going from 0 to n of n choose i. Okay. And now, so this is a combinatorial proof, and there's also an, sorry, there's also an algebraic proof, which we'll show in the next video. So one um, clear application of this result, of this identity, is uh, to count uh, number of uh, sequences with a certain property, and this is an example of what we call, at some point, thinking outside the circle. So uh, suppose that someone asks you, how many subsets of 1 up to n are there of size at most n minus 1? Then, as we know, it's also the same as asking how many n-bit sequences are there with at most n minus 1 once. Okay? So, for example, for n equal to 3, we're counting these sequences that have at most n minus 1, namely at most 2 ones. So it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. And how many such sequences are there? Well, there are, um, here there's one sequence with 0 ones, there's, there are three sequences with a single ones, one, and there are three sequences with two ones, and the total number of sequences with at most two ones is therefore one plus three plus three, which is seven. Okay? So in general, there are two ways of um, counting this number of n-bit sequences with at most n minus one ones. One is using the same way that we did here, namely, uh, it's going to be summation from i going from 0 to n minus 1 of n choose i. That's what we did here. This is 3 choose 0 plus 3 choose 1 plus 3 choose 2. 
how many sequences have zero ones, one one up to n minus one ones. So that's this calculation here. But we can also use the identity that we proved in the previous slide, that summation from i going to zero up to n of n choose i is two to the n. That just says that when you sum all sequences with any number of ones, it should give you two to the n. That's the total number of sequences of length n. And that tells us that if we just are just interested in, with, in sequences of at most n minus one ones, namely summation of i going to zero up to n minus I, one of n choose i, that's going to be the total sum, so the sum all the way up to n, minus the last term, minus n choose n, because what we're interested in is in just this sum up to n minus one, but if we add plus n choose n, the last term will get two to the n. So it's two to the n minus the last term, which is minus n choose n, which is two to the n minus one. So another way of getting this number seven would have been just two cubed minus one, which is seven. Okay, so you get that. All right, so um, we uh, talked about a couple of properties of um, the binomial coefficients, and what we want to do next time is continue with the Pascal triangle and the binomial uh, theorem, which is if you want another, yet another property of um, binomial coefficients. See you then.